Um, so welcome, welcome to our third Elevating Women in Leadership session. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Colette Andrew Arthur, and I'm a Senior Principal Consultant and Programme Manager for our Elevating Women in Leadership programme here in the UK. Joining me today is Madeline Shearer. Uh, I'll get you to just say a few words, Madeline, at this point, if that's okay. Hi, yeah, I'm one of the facilitators and, uh, oh gosh, I was trying to think how many eWill courses I've done, probably delivered about 25 courses, I would think. I would think so too. Wonderful. Oh, we really like looking forward to sharing our um, insights about what we hope to achieve in this particular topic today around impact and brand. Um, but this week, as we know, we're celebrating International Women's Day on the 8th of March. And this year's theme is all about inspiring inclusion. And one of the things we are often asked is why have development programmes specifically targeting women in leadership? And the research and data really tells us that women do face headwinds in progressing their careers to more senior levels. So we know that it can be harder um, and slower for a variety of reasons. So our Elevating Women in Leadership programme is all about focusing on those specific areas that are particularly relevant to women to enable them to thrive in their career in whatever way they choose that to be. Um, and inclusion is all about providing additional support where it's needed to create a level playing field. And so we hope this uh, this session goes some way in supporting that, that aim of International Women's Day this week. So to quickly recap on the taste of sessions, if this is your first time joining us, you're very welcome. And the um, other topics that we've covered, the first one was on career activism. So if you did join, that was the session with Orla and Felicia. Last week, the session was on confidence and resilience, and that was with Sarah and Mary. Today, Madeline and myself are looking forward to talking to you about leading impact and brand. Next week is the session on adding strategic value, and we finish the taster sessions with um, the session on allyship and mentorship um, for the final two weeks. And we're going to take you through how we deliver our programme and give you as much insight as possible, um, as much as we can in the 50 minutes, whilst also hopefully allowing time for questions at the end. Um, but for those of you who are here for your own development, um, we have provided a worksheet um, which will be posted in the chat. And we really encourage you to use that as a post-reflection tool, um, perhaps for some of the questions that we might provoke in this session. Um, and in there, we've, in, we've popped some of the, uh, the content from today so that you've got that as a takeaway. We also recognise that during the programme, one of the things we offer up to participants is the opportunity to connect on an individual level with a buddy. And we really get great feedback from the value of people having the opportunity to talk about the questions and um, particular topics with somebody else that's going through the same thought processes. Um, so again, we offer that up as a, a potential um, a consideration for you today to find yourself a buddy, maybe somebody that you uh, can connect with in the chat um, or somebody else from your organisation that you want to share some of your insights from this programme. Uh, with, uh, but it's an opportunity for you to then buddy up and think about what actions you want to take forward. We are in webinar format. There's a huge take up for these taster sessions. So unfortunately, it of course, has an impact on the interactivity. The programmes themselves are run in uh, a different format where we do use um, a great deal of interactivity with breakout groups um, and, and whiteboarding. Um, but for today, uh, we hope to make it as interactive as we can with using the chat as we have done already for introductions, um, but also um, in, in using some polls. So we'll uh, encourage you to um, get involved as, as much as you can. And please do post questions in the chat. We'll either pick those up as we go through if they're um, easy to address in the moment, um, but otherwise we'll uh, do a, a sweep at the end and try and cover off as many questions as we can. Uh, we've put the email address at the bottom, so if you did want to make contact with us, um, that's right there for you um, to uh, to get involved with us. 
So we are at this point, um, partway through the programme, um, and so at this point you would have attended a discovery session, um, and we talked about the discovery sessions last week in terms of what those are uh, intended to achieve. Um, so you would be arriving into the leading presence and impact module having had a discovery session to think about your takeaways from the confidence and resilience session. So we know it's only been a week and there may have been limited time for action, but if you did want to share with us any aha moments that came out of last week's session, um, any maybe boundaries that you started to manage as a result of giving consideration to those, um, then please do use the chat. We'd love to hear any anybody's uh, successes or progress made since last week. So pop those in the chat. Um, and then we're going to get going with a session on authenticity as the first topic in this uh, taster session. So Maddie, I'm going to um, hand to you, if I may, to talk about that. That's lovely. Thank you uh, for giving us the context. So there are three main aims for this programme. Um, I'll just put them up for you. Um, no, being clear about what you want others to know about you, being clear you know yourself and how you can show up authentically at work. Building that personal brand. So what are people saying about you and what would you like them to say? That, that's actually you, not who you want to be, but who you are. Um, and then sharing, being able to share your achievements and aspirations. Long gone are the days, probably as we move through our career, where we hope just work, working hard and sticking at our desk and keeping a low profile will get us promotion. I think that works quite well earlier on. But later, really, if you know you want to go in that direction, then let others know and let them be advocates for you as well. So uh, you'll remember from the earlier sessions, uh, we, we'd done a survey on the beliefs and behaviours of women who've done really well. The one that this seminar refers to are about that high degree of confidence. Confidence is one of the most attractive um, qualities that people have. Being able to advocate on your own behalf and influencing upwards. So all of those three are really addressed in this one. So normally we just take a moment at the beginning to welcome everybody. And you can do that now. Just put your feet on the ground. Take a couple of breaths. Let whatever was happening before you came on this slide off your shoulders. And just set an intention for how you'd like to be for the next 45 minutes or so. Right. So you've probably all got definitions of authenticity. Um, it'd be great if you put some of them into the chat box actually right now. And, uh, Colette will keep an eye on that while I'm presenting. We often think about it as being uh, it's to do with our integrity, to do with the, our internal values matching our external behaviours. Um, many of you will have heard of Brené Brown, her, her TED Talks up in the top five TED Talks ever. She's done a few of them. They're amusing. They're really poignant. Um, very beautiful. She works on vulnerability, sometimes shame. And we love this definition that she uses of authenticity. It's the daily practice of letting go who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. Wow, it's quite a powerful definition. So that might add to any of the ones that you've already got. Um, she works on, on human connections, on, on really how we belong and empathize and love. So uh, very deep work from home. And when we think about authenticity, we think that there's, there's more than one way of being you. If you're purple, there's lots of times when you're quite deep purple and there's times when you want to be light purple, but it's all you. And during our lives, we want to be able to stretch out into more of who we are, not less of who we are. Um, but we don't want to be coming 
we don't want to suddenly be doing green. Even purple's made up of blue and red. So there's lots of shades of this about there. Being authentic isn't just it, splatting over other people, isn't just saying the first thing that comes to your mind. It's being you with intention. And that's what we're looking for, bringing out the best of you for the different contexts that you work in and the different people you work with. Um, so a little poll here. What do you think about the headwinds? What makes it difficult to be authentic at work? So only two, only two percent have said that um, there's no headwinds. So most of you think there are headwinds. Some say often, a lot say sometimes. Fifty-nine percent say sometimes. About half of them say often. And a few of you aren't sure about them. So maybe as we define them, that'll, that'll help a bit. So let's have a quick look. So some of the headwinds, we always give pre-work uh, before each session. And, and the participants will have read these. This is from some of our research as well, that shows that women are expected to use masculine traits to be noticed, to be um seen as successful in an organization. So we asked that question, do you think that that's true? The feminine traits that are, are more likely to be compassion, collaboration, are less likely to be recognized. Do you agree or disagree with that? When women speak up powerfully, um, perhaps, they're just, perhaps they're perceived as less likable and so on as we go through. One of the things we've noticed is this last one is that there seems to be a lack of female roles. So some of you might uh, recognize that, that they, do you have a really good um, assertive female role model who can do assertiveness and grace at the same time? Right. The other thing is we refer back to the last session on confidence where we look at what's inside our head. I could never do that. Uh, I need to do everything that I'm asked. I'm not good enough. Might recognize some of those beliefs and challenge those and come up with different so I can reach and stretch. So I want to be respected. I'm enough. I've got my strengths. So it's a real nice link between the last session and this one as well. Great. So let me hold it back over to you, Claire. Just on mute there. There's some lovely comments in the chat there. So thank you for sharing those and some um, very poignant examples of where people are seeing um, observations made very differently of the same behaviours, uh, depending on whether it's uh, a male or a female in, the, in that position. So um, indeed, it's something we hear a lot of on the programme. So we are focusing on bringing our authentic self to work and communicating that to others. Um, and there are three things that really come together here. First of all is how I see myself. And in the second module around confidence and resilience, we talked about raising self-awareness in terms of the value we bring into strength. Second thing is how others see me. And so during this module, we really think about um, what are the observations and feedback that we're getting from others? There's an opportunity for participants to engage with a strength scope 360 uh, and to get feedback on those significant seven strengths that will have come out in the um, strength scope survey. Um, but alternatively, we set individuals up to encourage them to do a five word activity and ask people to give them five words that describe them. Um, and that's a real opportunity, again, to see what comes up for others when they think about you and the impression that you're making. And then the third aspect is how you want to be seen. And we're going to cover that off in this session in terms of personal brand. Um, and at this point in the session, we would be really encouraging individuals to think about that five word activity or the Strength Scope 360. Thinking about what words are they happy with? What impact might those words have had for them? And is there anything that they want to change? So are there things that they need to strengthen? Is there anything that they want to make more visible? Perhaps there's some words missing in those five words that they would have liked to have heard and seen described about themselves, but 
perhaps not top of mind for others. And so really encouraging breakout groups as an opportunity to um, really explore with each other how they might change that and what they might want to do about that. Just to share with you an example of Strength Scope 360 report. This is a page of what individuals would receive um, if they were in the programme engaging with the 360. So having covered everything that Madeline and myself have talked about today, we'd be about 60 to 70 minutes through the module um, of, the, of, of personal impact and brand. And so at this point, we would pause, have a break, have an um, opportunity for coffee, tea, and then really energise the group with a, a, a regrouping and an energiser when they um, come back into the programme. And all of what we have talked about um, so far in this session is really the setup for helping us think about personal brand. And when we think about personal brand, we're really thinking about what is what is it that people do say about us when we're not perhaps in the room and a lovely quote there from Chris Ducker which really kind of um, draws attention to perhaps what personal brand is and and it's really what we communicate about ourselves uh, and I suppose I'm just going to pause on that for a moment to really encourage you to think about what we mean by that and of course we make an impression in lots of ways all of the time and so we might make an impression in terms of yes how we style and groom ourselves of course, I've got a beautiful image here of a uh, lady in a yellow jacket styled beautifully against the backdrop. But also it might be how we show up, whether we're late for meetings, whether we miss meetings, whether we're early, whether we are, um, how we um, present ourselves during that meeting. What's our pace like in how we communicate? What's our tone like in how we communicate? And of course, that comes across not only in meetings, but also in the way that we communicate in the written way. So emails and our social media um, all are creating for us an impression and also building to create our reputation and our, our personal brand. So it's at this point in the programme that we're really encouraging individuals to think about, is their personal brand speaking for them in the way that they want it to? And are they taking control of that? So perhaps people haven't given consideration to well, I don't know how people consider me or I don't know if my brand is what I want it to be. Um, and so it's an opportunity for women on the programme to really think about whether they've allowed it to take on a life of its own and whether they want to now make a, a choice to maybe perhaps control that narrative. And so um, I'm going to share with you now an example of a colleague story uh, that she shares with me. And I think it's a beautiful illustration of perhaps some of the reflection that can happen at this point in the program. And so she, she did the five word activity just as we'd encouraged. And she was happy with most of the words that came back. But one word that kind of maybe rubbed or jarred for her was that she was low maintenance. Now, what was meant by that was that she was helpful. She got on with the task, um, did the job well, um, and um, was liked for that. Um, but actually, the reason it rubbed for her is because the word strategic was missing and she didn't want to be low maintenance. She wanted to be seen as somebody who was curious, asked questions, um, was commercial in the way that she engaged at work. And so she changed that by deliberately asking more questions, connecting it to the vision of the organisation, making sure she understood how what was being asked of her contributed. And over time, once she repeated that five word activity, um, I think it's about a year later, that word low maintenance no longer appeared. And actually the word strategic and commercial really did come up um, for her as one of the words that was now much more um, in, her, in her brand and reputation. Um, so it's, it's a lovely example of how actually having that opportunity to reflect on what are people saying about me and is that what I want them to say? can change your own behaviour to maybe shape that differently. So we might want to think about examples of personal brands and what it takes to build a personal brand. And of course, we've got some images of females here that I'm sure as you're looking at, we've got Jacinda Arden, Ellen, Greta Thunberg, uh, Oprah, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, and um, all of these females um, have a brand and are very cognizant about how they manage that 
Now, we might all say different things about whether we agree with their brand at this point in time or in the past. Um, but of course, the point that we want to make here and on the program is that personal brand is not just something for celebrities, but it is something that needs consideration. Um, and there's an opportunity here. If you're thinking about progressing your career, having more influence, getting recognition, that actually having a brand that is powerful and working for you is a critical component in, in building that. Um, but it's made up of different elements. Um, and I'd love to hear from you on the chat some of the things that you think go into perhaps building a personal brand. So I'm just going to give you a moment to maybe share what do you think maybe some of those ingredients might be towards building a strong personal brand? Self-awareness, lovely. Thanks, Yvonne, kicking us off there. Confident, strong personal values. Yeah, lovely. Good reputation, consistent behaviours. Yeah, consistency coming up quite a lot there. Leadership sponsors who advocate for you when you're not in the room. So important. Yeah, and we'll talk more about that. Mm. Emotional that. intelligence is the sponsors. Yeah, wonderful. I'm going to put up some of the things that we kind of consider and some of these will be semantics based on what you've said as well. So there's some authenticity, integrity, openness, trust, style, expertise, confidence, a word that was used in the chat. And of course, we can agree that the others that you've shared would also be really relevant. One of the ways that we try to help provide a tool and we put, put it into the worksheet for you um, to help people consider how they frame their brand and what they want to be known for is the use of the brand pyramid. And this is an opportunity for people to really, as you say in the chat, give consideration to, well, what are my values? Um, what is my unique core attitude and, and, and value that guides me and how that may, maybe is linked to my standout key strength? So we keep coming back to what are those unique strengths that really propel me to... Um, deliver at performance inflow and then we talk about the value that you want to contribute what do you want to be known for um, and what's the best of what I can bring and we encourage participants to really reflect on each of those elements of the brand pyramid um, to create that authentic personal brand in your worksheet we've given an example of how that might look and I'm just going to pop that on the slide and give you a moment to reflect on that um, but it's really a, a sort of a an elevator pitch in, in the making. So it's helping you to really pull into a simple um, one place for you to have an opportunity to create something that's quite personal to you and help guide you in terms of those conversations. So it, it is those moments. Perhaps we've talked about networking in the first module. Those opportunities where you are networking, making sure that some of what you want to bring forward is um, what you're putting forward first in those conversations and um, in here I guess is an opportunity if you are going to take a buddy out of this session or you have created that relationship throughout the tasters um, opportunity here yes. to encourage you to take your brand pyramid into that conversation with your buddy maybe test them out with each other how do they feel how do they sit with each of you and um, is there anything that you would want to um, help help refine and shape and get, offer up that feedback to each other. Okay, I'm gonna just pause. And uh, Maddie, you're gonna pick up here with um, impact. I am, and that's lovely, isn't it? Um, and so they realize now, and especially after we've talked to them about it, people are being asked in interviews, what's your personal brand? So just the fact that they have an answer to that, even if it's three values that they stand for, that's great. And then they can measure their actions by those. Great. So let's have a look then at the personal impact. So we think of um, leadership presence. We talk about leadership presence, but we don't really take the anatomy of it very seriously. So um, we've defined it as creating impactful moments and experience to quickly gain credibility influence and trust. 
And if people trust you, then you can lead. If they don't have confidence in you, if they don't think you're credible, you're not going to be able to lead them anyway. And we often think about that being in a big room full of a thousand people that you're giving a massive presentation, rather like the picture on here. But actually, it's often our one-to-one -one presence that can be so telling for us as a leader. Um, and so we've asked this question, so do put anything that helps you communicate with impact, as I share, and the structure that, that we use to think about it. So we think um, those the impact of presence can be from what happens in our head, what we're telling ourselves, to how others experience us, how we're interacting with them, what they see of us, what we're consciously or unconsciously revealing about ourselves. All of those shape others' perfect, um, perceptions. I'll go through these very quickly, but just to give you an idea. So when we do the thinking, that's got everything from the personal brand in, being very intentional, intentional at our goals, being very deliberate about where we're headed and what we're sharing, and being very prepared um, mentally and physically. And a lot of you will know Amy Cuddy, and you don't have to start with the thinking, you can start with the body of confidence as well, and that can be a really helpful way to start. So the interactions are uh, a lot about the way we say things, the words that we use. Do we stop and listen or are we just talking? How are we interacting with those others? Are we including people? Are we living our values or just talking them? And we'll talk about more about language a bit later, but we often use quite hesitant language as women, not always, of course. I loved all the comments in the chat about the cultural differences, about what a range of women's styles there are anyway. Um, but women tend to be a little bit more hesitant. So how about I tend to agree? And we can start to use slightly stronger language. I strongly suggest my recommendation is, um, I know we often sabotage ourselves by saying, um, uh, well, it's only me. Uh, is it just me that's thinking this? Or I've just got a small thought. And we're just encouraging people to notice what they do and then to perhaps use stronger language about them. So, and on the re reveal is the side I like a lot. So, often what we reveal is in our body language, isn't it? As Colette said already, there's also the stuff about. Are we on time? It's no good saying I'm the most efficient project manager if I'm always late for meetings, if I waffle, if I've got papers all over the place. So it's a lot about our behaviour. It's a lot about our voice, our tone, our pitch. Clearly, I, I give a very different impression of myself if I'm down here than if I come to full presence. And just by changing my body a little bit, you see quite a lot of difference, I would hope, in how ready I am to engage with you, how attentive I am to you. Am I okay with silences? Turns out I've got better at them, <laughs> but they're still uncomfortable for me. So I know that, I found out tricks to hold that nod and smile. <laughs> And I can manage it much better. So our presence is much more about our physicality. Of course, it's also whether we're distracted or whether we're absolutely attentive on the person as well. So let me come back to the slide <laughs> and finish the thoughts on there we go. So at this stage, after talking about that, we would have given people a, a chance to practice saying their personal brand. Now, in a in a day-long workshop, when we've got about an hour on brand, we don't have time for them to absolutely perfect their, their final brand. But we might test some words that they've got from it. We might ask them to read the top or maybe the bottom layer of their pyramid, anywhere they want to, and we get them to buddy up, as Colette said, and then practice them. And then maybe with the whole group, deliver it with the presence on top. 
So we're building up, we're building up um, so that they're more comfortable to do a stronger, a stronger delivery. Then we have lunchtime. We really encourage everybody, if it's a virtual session especially, we really uh, encourage them to go outside, get under the air. Some will have body conversations. We'll make sure they have an hour, whatever they do, so that they can really get away from the computer for at least a few minutes of that time. Uh, anything else to add on the lunchtime, Colette? No, I don't think so. I think... Uh... Great. So when they come back from lunch, one of the things that we um, like to ensure we have for each of the modules, and I, I, I'm sure it's been mentioned, but we do like to have guest speakers on the workshop, um, a female that comes in and talks to the programme participants about their experience. Now, that's not to say they're somebody that has necessarily completed and polished their journey, but somebody who's really connected with the topic and maybe is really working on this and has some tips and some um, uh, advice to share in how they're currently managing this as a topic for them. But it's about sharing a different perspective. And there's so much to be gained for the women in listening to somebody else who perhaps is thinking and feeling the same. And there's that connection on the topic that says, wow, actually you're struggling in the same way I am. But equally there's value to be gained from somebody who thinks quite differently about the topic, maybe doesn't struggle, has never struggled with this as an area. And it often opens up a lot of conversation um, uh, in terms of different perspectives and where people are and sharing. So we give a good 45 minutes to the speaker session, and that's an opportunity to hear from the speaker for about 20 minutes. And then we allow a good 20 minutes Q&A to really explore what the speaker has shared. So at this point, we're kind of midway through the afternoon of this module and we start to move into another topic around self-advocacy. I'd like to really ask you a question to answer in the chat, which is how do you feel about self-promotion? Perhaps you feel okay about it and you could put an A, A okay around self-promotion or self-advocating um, or B, perhaps you feel a bit more like this lady. Maybe you feel a bit more cringe, maybe it's a bit awkward, uh, but we'd love to hear lots of Bs, A's, a few A's coming, but lots of Bs. Yeah, it's interesting. Awesome. Interesting awesome. that we have so many Bs on the programme as well. Just going to check, Maddie, can you, are you getting an echo on me or is it just myself? No echo. No, sounds fine. Okay. I'm getting a slight distraction, but I'm getting an echo on my set, but that's okay. All right, good. So, yeah, indeed, there is a lot of us. Not everybody, but there is a lot of us that can feel quite uncomfortable about the idea of needing to self-advocate and perhaps putting ourselves forward. And you might have some suggestions for why you think that is the case. Um, maybe it's that voicing um, successes and accomplishments feels like bragging. Um, we can think about how girls are socialised. I've got a daughter myself and I often question the language and how I may be framing things for her and setting her up to view the world. But, you know, we might consider that girls are maybe socialised not to brag. Is that becoming of um, a little girl to brag? And, you know, I see little girls in the playground at school and, you know, it, it jars with me when they are really putting themselves very much forward. And I think, gosh, that's quite affronting. But actually, you know, there's something to be said for that that's going to um, stand them in good stead as opposed to asking your child not to boast, uh, perhaps. But there's something to be said about how, how we're raised. We also know from the programme and, you know, talking to women, our own research, um, that women do hold the belief that good performance should in itself contribute, in, you know, as it and stand on its own two feet as merit and be noticed. Um, so good work will be noticed and rewarded in and of itself. And unfortunately, um, we underplay the importance of influencing, using our networks, asking for opportunities. Um, and we do tend, as women, to chalk up our successes perhaps to luck or timing versus skills, talents and expertise. Uh, so all of that playing into the mix perhaps about how we feel about self-advocacy. 
we know that women are maybe perhaps less interested, um, uncomfortable, unmotivated in tasks that do require uh, an element of self-advocacy or self-promotion. And perhaps as a result, we don't perform as well in those tasks that require that. So again, that might all be something that contributes. So I guess there's an opportunity and something that we really encourage a moment's thought around in the programme is to think about reframing. So even silently in your head, the way you talk about some of these things can affect your behaviour and your tone and style. So not even using the word bragging or boasting silently in your own self-talk. So eradicating that from your language and really reframing this as something about making your work more visible. So being proud of the work that you're contributing and being able to share that with others for others to benefit. So it's about maybe thinking about how you can offer up opportunities for learning. So again, something that really lands very well with women on the programme is thinking about how they can turn it from bragging into actually setting somebody else up for success by, by sharing their learning, by sharing what worked and what didn't um, in order to promote but in a way that isn't bragging that is actually about um, a, a supportive um, other advocacy and that's a that's the other thing that we really pick up on is really encouraging other advocacy so it's much easier for women to feel able to advocate and so and, and promote others in terms of their words and behaviors than they do their own their own self so setting up a rhythm in the organization in your own team even you know where the culture may not support it but in your own team setting up a rhythm of advocating for each other uh, and looking for opportunities to really ask for people to advocate for you perhaps there's certain awards that you want to be acknowledged for and and really asking your network to um, advocate for you in regards to that so it, it takes a bit of reframing um, but finding a space where that actually feels comfortable for individuals, there's often a little tweak in, in the self-talk that can make a difference to helping people lean into this space and to feel much more comfortable in how they engage with it. So we're going to just give you a moment now to have that moment's pause to really think about how you come to this topic. And one of the things you might want to think about is whether you do um, set yourself up to um, have your successes acknowledged or whether you minimise your own contributions. So perhaps you over apologize, perhaps you hedge your bets. I might be wrong, but um, I don't know if it's just me or, and so using those phrases, which perhaps um, diminishes the value of the contribution you're, you're about to make with um, a little bit of uh, uh, minimizing or brushing off positive feedback. So um, Maida, if I could ask you to launch our poll, please. Um, do any of these relate to you? You can answer more than one of them, but which ones do you perhaps resonate with as you're looking at this list? Are you brushing off positive feedback? Are you over apologising? Maybe you're not doing any of them and this would be an opportunity in the programme to maybe share how you avoid falling into those pitfalls or, or, or what you do to perhaps really help your strength be visible. What are the ways you've got comfortable doing that? So as you can hear in the way Madeline and I are talking, there's lots of opportunity for cross-pollinating of ideas between participants. So as much as it is about us bringing ideas to the, the group, but lots of opportunity for individuals to share what works for them and, and get lots of tips from each other. But that's great. So I'm going to just end the poll. So there's lots of... Um, agreement in brushing off positive feedback over half of you doing that hedging again over half of us maybe thinking about ways in which we might oh I might be wrong I tend to, I tend to agree was one that Madeline shared earlier um using qualifiers so yeah good all right Madeline I'm gonna and, and, and a few who who don't recognize any of those which is fine we we need more female role models so we'll we'll take that as well so um, I think this is really important. Being able to share our stories is really helpful 
if it's, it's good to have a network, but if we don't inform our network, it can't be much use for us. So if I just met Colette and she's just an acquaintance for me, if, if somebody comes and says, oh, you know, how's Colette? I could say, well, she's, she seems really nice. You know, I've, I've met her a couple of times. She seems very nice. I can't do much more than that, though. But if Colette's talked to me a little bit and said, um, you know, I feel my strengths are are in these two areas. Uh, I'm really great at presenting and I really love organizing training sessions. Really a passion for me. Then I can do a little bit more for her. I can start to be an ally. So if somebody's saying, is there somebody you know who, who might want to be in charge of organizing uh, quite powerful training sessions? Uh, I could say, actually, I know that Andrew Arthur is really interested in that game and she sees that she's really got a strength in that area and a passion for it too. So now I'm something of an ally for. If she's told me a story and said, do you know, um, three weeks ago, we had such a difficult conversation with a customer. I knew the company really needed training, but they were about to pull out. And uh, I worked with my team, we realigned the customer, um, and I bought the whole thing forward. So we not only saved the customer, but the customers bought more than we originally thought. Then when somebody says, right, we need somebody um, to really uh, manage and bring on a huge training program, I could say, Colette Andrew Arthur is the person for you. She's recently changed things around, turned a customer who was about to leave away, left them very happy and sold them quite a lot of really high level training. I can only do that advocacy if she's given me the story. So it's very important for us to be able to, to, be able to hold all those. When I learned coaching, we thought of every Every conversation should have maybe a statement in it or a request or an offer. So we try and get everybody and give them a chance and a framework to be able to ask for something, to say what the impact of a story was for them and to be able to make a request at the end of it so that people can advocate for them. So getting people to be more aware of that language, getting people to actually have the time to practice um, making these statements, to get each other's uh, feedback and being able to hone those statements and use the presence for it is a way to bring it all together for us. And so we give them a chance to practice, to say what they've learned at the end of the day and um, to really be able to digest and, and put themselves in a good position to continue their work with their brand and impact. Fantastic. So let me just close out the session as we are. That would have brought us to the end of the oh, session. And um, at this point, we're going to um, launch an evaluation for this taster, but just to really sort of set you into the flow of what will come next. So we hope you've enjoyed this taste, or I hope it has given you a really good feel for how we would manage the one day session around impact and brand. Um, and hopefully you've got a really good sense of the types of exercises, materials and thinking that we would provoke. The next session will be on adding strategic value next week, same time, lunchtime, uh, UK time, 12 o'clock if you are in the UK. Um, and that will be looking at how we um, ensure that women are working at the right level in order to reach those senior level uh, positions. Um, we encourage you to um, have those buddy conversations if that's something you're interested and committed to. Um, then please do use the worksheet and some of the questions we've provoked around the buddy, uh, the um, brand pyramid, sorry, um, to really encourage those conversations before next week. Um, and of course, if you do have any questions, the email address is just there for you. Um, but Maddy and I are happy to um, stay on for the next five minutes or so to answer any questions. I can see that uh, people in the chat are looking for a buddy. So that's a wonderful way to make new connections and, and reach out. So 
again if you're looking for a buddy yeah look wonderful you could create a little cohort of um peer peer coaching and thinking circles if there's more than oh, one nice. of these. and um, Maida will put the worksheet back in the chat so it is further up in the chat but if you join just after that was shared that would be the reason that you couldn't see it um so we'll just shared it again um, so that will be there i can see two people are asking for buddies so maybe gabby and alison you can get together even more um, than that so there's a few more so oh, up, up, and Chantel, zoe i'll find yeah, each other Selena. so plenty uh, of you to connect I saw, I love the discussion there as well. This has been so, the chat's been so rich. I love the discussion about it's so awkward to accept a compliment, to accept the positive feedback. So to be able to do that with Grace and just say, thank you. We do it all the time, don't we? Somebody says, oh, what a lovely cake. Oh, it's an easy recipe. Lovely cake. Bought it in a charity shop. So just saying, thank you. 